Hello everyone and welcome to my weekly Coyotes chat. It's 2 p.m. on Wednesday so that means it's time to answer your questions about the Coyotes and talk about how the team is performing. Uh, they returned home late last night uh, after completing a back-to-back -back set in Winnipeg and St. Louis. Um, they're obviously mirrored in a season-long four-game losing streak, um, which was prolonged after these losses to the Jets, a 5-1 to one loss Monday, and then a 2-1 loss yesterday to the St. Louis Blues. But uh, I think most people watching that game and the players participating in that game were encouraged by some of the progress they made. It wasn't as lopsided as some of these previous losses, and they felt better about the steps they were taking in the game uh, to hopefully be successful. So the challenge now is to parlay that into more success and hopefully for the Coyotes a win and they'll have that opportunity to do that tomorrow when they host the Vancouver Canucks. Um, so that'll be an interesting game to see if they can push that momentum along and, and finally get a win. So let's start with your questions today. Okay, this first one comes from Sunny. The Coyotes have too many soft European forwards in their lineup and some minor league forwards too. Is it time for Don Maloney to go in and get some NHL forwards that can take the pressure off the defense and goalies? Um, I think adding a forward is still obviously on general manager Don Maloney's radar. Um, you know, I, Whether or not that deal gets executed in the near future I think is still to be determined. I think we kind of have maybe two trade deadlines, so to speak, this season. One kind of happening before the Olympic break in a few weeks, and then obviously the official trade deadline in March. Um, I think that's been clear the last few games that their offense has struggled, that they, they maybe want some more firepower up front. But obviously, um, you know, they've been really encouraged overall by the offensive performance this season. It's, it's probably one of their most consistent aspects of their play. Um, you look at the moves they made in the offseason, bringing in Mike Ribeiro. Um, you know, he has helped this offense, you know, for long stretches of this season. Obviously, right now, when you're in a four-game losing slump, um, I think everyone struggles, and those struggles just become magnified. So, um, you know, I think adding a forward is on the to-do list, but are we going to see that forward in the lineup, you know, in you know in the next few days? Probably not. Um, but I think beefing up every part of the lineup, maybe aside from goaltending, since they seem pretty settled with Smith and Grice for now, um, are probably areas that the Coyotes and general manager Don Maloney are looking to improve. Um, Pat in Prescott says, Hey Sarah, yeah, the Yotes are in a slump, but last night's effort was far more encouraging than the previous ones. I would agree. How about this as a suggestion? When the team returns home on Thursday, how about Arizona hockey fans leave their Connect sweaters at home and put on some Sedona Red to support our guys? Maybe we need a mid-season whiteout. Uh, I don't know if we'll see a whiteout tomorrow, but uh, I think Pat touches on a point that, uh, you know, you'd still try and support your team if this is your team, and um, tough times are bound to happen through a season. And I think this really kind of mirrors an adage that the players try to take to heart, not get too high, not get too low. Um, obviously, right now, it, it's discouraging, um, but they can't really let that dictate everything um, you know, when they when they get on the ice. And just like early in the season when they were off to one of the best starts in franchise history, they tried not to temper, they tried not to get too high and really temper that excitement. So I think that's kind of what Pat is touching on there. Um, the next question comes from Gosby. Uh, George Gosby tweeted, money not an issue. Uh, Gosby tweeted that last night, by the way. Uh, we believe in, t in team we acquired. However, Glendale isn't getting any of the NHL's revenue sharing that Gosby is getting. Tenants and parking is all that Glendale receives, which is very little. Will Gosby spend some of that NHL revenue money to make this a winning team? Uh, I think that's what he was referring to when he tweeted that last night. Money is not an issue. We believe in the team we acquired. Um, but it's really up to General Manager Don Maloney to find a deal that he thinks will benefit and help this team right now. Um, you know, it, we've seen in the past, and it's not just in, in the NHL, it transcends all sports, that money can't necessarily buy a winner. We see some teams that spend, um, you know, enormous amounts of, of money to try and piece together winner and they just don't have the other pieces there, chemistry, roles, whatever it may be, coaching, um, you know, to produce a winner. So I, I think by sending that tweet, Gosby was saying, that's not the problem here. We're going to find a solution. We have the means to do it, but it's just finding that solution. And I keep going back to a comment Dave Tippett made last week 
when he said, we haven't yet maxed out the players we currently have. So it's a little premature to go and try and find outside solutions until we know that we've gotten everything out of the players that we currently have. And, you know, as recent as a few days ago, he said he hadn't reached that level yet. And that's his job, to pull as much as he can um, out of his players. And once they max out, then it's time to maybe look for a trade to shake things up. But as recent as a few days ago, he didn't feel that they were at that point yet. Okay, next question comes from uh, Rob Kenny. Hi, Sarah. Do you feel like when the Coyotes get one big win, it will snowball into a streak in the right direction? I think that's very possible that that happens, and I think that's what pet players and Dave Tippett are believing as well. Um, it just takes one game to turn the tide. This game, like many others, is predicated so much on momentum. We see that in games. We see that when one team goes up, you know, they, they really start to, to pull on the chains and keep it going. Or, as we've seen probably most recently with the Coyotes, the opponents score, and no matter how well they've been playing up to that point, it just seems to visibly let the air out of their sails. So I think that's what they're thinking could potentially translate on a bigger stage if they get a win. Um, you know, maybe that can snowball into something more. The schedule sets itself up that way before the Olympic break. I think they have a lot of home games. They have another five-game homestand to complete before where they all break for the Olympics. Um, they do have one more road trip um, to Western Canada in the mix, um, not next week, but the, but the week after. So there is an opportunity, though, to really grab some points here and feel good about yourself going into the break. And I think right now when you're kind of at the bottom of this pit and you're in a losing streak, it just takes one to, to completely you know, erase those emotions and, and get on a potentially a winning track because you just feel so re-energized that you got the first one, the monkey off your back. Okay, next question comes from guest. So a seemingly growing problem is the lack of talent on wing at the Hansel Verbal line. Kennedy, while good, is perhaps not talented enough. There was talk about Molson, Erat, Whitney, Fleischman, etc. to fill that void. Although Maloney has mentioned that it is difficult to procure a trade due to the cap, are there any players on the market that you see as viable solutions for a playoff push? What would their cost be? Um, this is a great point by guest, and I think that the players that he mentioned probably are some of the ones that could be viable options for the Coyotes. Um, obviously, Ray Whitney has had so much success when he was with the Coyotes on that Hansel Verbata line. Um, not only was he a playmaker himself, but he really just seemed to energize and revitalize reading Verbata's game. He was the, you know, the quintessential setup man for Verbata, who was known as a great finisher. Whitney is on the latter year of a two-year deal with the Dallas Stars, so he's set to become a restricted or an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. I think he's someone that you can keep an eye on. Maybe they bring him back for the push because I think they feel confident enough that he could settle back into the system, and they know that he plays well with Hansel and Verbata. And that, like Guest points out, is really an area that they've been trying to fill, that void on that wing next to Hansel Verbata. They tried Steve Sullivan last season, didn't pan out, and the search really continues. Kennedy has done admirable there at some times. They've had Lori Korbakoski there at stretches recently. And so uh, I think that's still you know, a work in progress. But I think what's important to note with these players is their current contract situation. Like Matt Molson, he is set to become you know, a UFA after this season. His deal, he's on you know, an expiring deal. The Coyotes in the past usually haven't wanted to take on players um, you know, who could walk potentially for nothing in the summer. We've seen a lot of deadline deals where players like Antoine Vermette, like Rusty Klesla in the past have come in with term. And I think that's made it very manageable for Don Maloney, especially with a rising cap. You might be able to get um, you know, more, more bargain for your buck, so to speak if you have players coming in on deals that might be undervalued under a new cap system that's going up. So I think that's important. Fleischman has another year left on his contract. He's about 4.5 million cap hit, so that might be out of their range, but then again, on the flip side, we have George Gosby saying money's not an issue. So that'll be something to continue to monitor. I will say something about ERAT. I know that's been a persistent rumor this season, but I just am curious as to why, maybe why it's still existing. I think it's, you know, maybe because he's been a healthy scratch lately. I think because he's checked, maybe people think that he's a natural fit on that Hansel Verbata line, but 
I think there's so many factors to take in, into consideration with Erat. This is the second time he's asked for a trade from a team. You wonder about how he would fit into a locker room. Um, and you just look at his stats this season. They haven't been conducive to a player that you'd expect to kit start another line on another team. Um, so there's uh, so many factors, I think, to take into consideration right now when you're looking to add pieces. But like in the past, Don Maloney has usually made a trade or two to boost a team before the playoff push, and, and I don't expect that to be any different this season. Linderloo wants to know, anybody have any superstitious routines they do before each game? Um, you know, I think most guys have a routine. I wouldn't say it's superstitious, but I think a lot of guys just have a routine of how they prepare themselves for the game. What food they eat, they take a nap. Um, a lot of guys, just how they put on their equipment, left side, right side, how they take their stick. Um, I haven't heard about anything quirky, superstitious-wise, but a lot of it's just what makes them feel comfortable in getting prepared. And it's just sticking with the routine of how they prepare themselves for the game, from the restaurant they go to to get their pregame meal or what they eat, um, you know, to how they, um, you know, put their, put their skates on, which one they tie first over the other. That sort of thing is usually common. Um... Uh, Sunnerler 06, any chance the Coyotes package some young players, OEL, for that elusive top line score? Uh, the Coyotes are not trading Oliver Ekman Larson. He's the cornerstone of this blue line. He's locked into a very long term contract. Uh, he's one of you know, only two players on the team that have been awarded a six year contract. So he is staying put. And, um, you know, they, I don't think they're going to uh, mortgage, you know, the youth of this team that they expect to be here long term for a short term fix. That's just not in Don Maloney's DNA and not his style of, of GM so far. Uh, another question from Linderloo, why did they have to tape the end of the stick? Um, tape adds a little bit more grip. Just, you know, it's, instead of just having it, you know, bounce off the, off the stick, I think they all feel comfortable having tape on there to help with the grip and help with handling the puck. Uh, guest wants to know, do you think Mike Ribeiro is a true number one center or is he more of a number two center? I don't think he's performed as well as I thought he would. Um, you know, I think what's interesting in this system with the Coyotes is that I don't think they have clear cut one, two, three, four centermen. I think obviously you have a fourth line and that's pretty clear. You have a checking line which is usually considered your third line. Um, but otherwise I don't think the Coyotes have necessarily played right Provero in a number one role, a number two role, or number three role. I think that they feel confident in their depth at center that they're able to roll three lines interchangeably. Uh, obviously he was hyped coming in as a number one center. I think he's been uh, you know a boost for the Coyotes. I definitely think that he you can see why they wanted to go and add him why he's um, hailed as a good centerman in this league. But much like the Coyotes, he's had ups and downs this season, and I think that's because the team has had ups and downs, and I think it's easy for individuals to fall into that into that pattern as well. But, um, you know, I, I think he's had stretches where early on I think he was transitioning, so maybe he was off to a little of a slow start. He had a stretch there, I think, at end of October into November where he was really good. Um, you know, just really seemed to have his hands on a lot of scoring plays that the Coyotes had. And most recently I think he's cooled off, just like the Coyotes. So I think the challenge for him is to separate himself from that and always be good, be consistent. We know he can be. He was a point for player game last year in Washington so the challenge is to is to refine that pace but um, you know I think much like other players he deserves a little of the criticism when they're struggling but overall I think that he has helped this team offensively more than he than he's hurt it perhaps uh, especially when you look over a whole body of, of work so far this season. Hamad says Yandel's play has really slipped since the U.S. Olympic team announcement. Do you think not making the team has had an adverse effect on him? This was something that I was actually wondering about yesterday. Um, you know, it, it seems that uh, up to the Olympic announcement, Yandel was on the top of his game. You know, management was calling him their best player, and, and he looked like he was really carrying the load with some injuries. With Zabina Mahalik out, Oliver Ekman Larson was banged up a little bit, and since then, I would agree he has looked like a little bit of a different player. Maybe he's had his confidence rattled by this news. Um, I don't know if he'd ever publicly admit that um, that you know the decision rattled him and disappointed him and upset him maybe so much so that's affected his play but um, much like everyone else on this team it's just time to press the reset button put that in the past and uh, and carry on I really think that as much as a great of an honor it is to go play for the Olympics I think it's affected some players this season Yandel, Mike Smith um, 
they were building up to the news and now they have the news and there's still an opportunity to prove yourself and so I think that's been a challenge for some players and I think that's why we're seeing some struggles right now individually. Um, Johnny wants to know, this is kind of a housekeeping question, are Coyotes practices morning skates open to the public in Scottsdale? Yes they are. Newfie Jeff, Sarah, Don Maloney just made head coach of the just made you head coach of the Coyotes for the rest of the year. Okay. Uh, what changes would you like to make to the team? Personnel, systems, line combos, seat pairings, goal irritation, etc. I would like to hear some of the ideas for improvement for someone who knows the team well. Thanks. Wow, you're putting me on the spot here, Newfie Jeff. I, um, you know, I think some of it, like you said, is probably personnel. I really think that no matter what system you try and dictate, um, you know, you really need the personnel to execute it. And I think that's why we maybe see, saw the Coyotes kind of max out last year um, and not make the playoffs. They have a great system in place. They have a great coach. Um, but they need the talent to execute that. And so, you know, I think maybe it is adding another bona fide defenseman. Maybe it is adding a couple more surefire forwards. And I think once you get the right mix in there, it's easy to sell your system. It's easy to sell the style that you want to play. And I think there's a trending style in the West that we're seeing teams execute. It's fast, quick hockey. It's smart, simple hockey, though. Um, it's defensively responsive hockey. I don't think there's anything wrong with Dave Tippett's system. I think that's something you want to keep because I think a lot of the successful teams in the league play that style. Style. Chicago, Boston, so very responsible defensive teams and I think the Coyotes need to keep that base um, but I think you need the talent to execute it. So maybe it's adding a few more pieces. That's what much of our discussion today has been about, finding pieces to complement the group you have already and if they do that I think that they'll be a much more competitive team. Well we have a lot of questions today and I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon and I'm going to answer the rest of these questions in a blog um, but we're going to wrap it up here let me find a really cool question to uh, to wrap this up okay another kind of scenario question no trade for use as Maloney says there are no trades to be had if that weren't the case I can't think of a reason why he wouldn't have made a move by now He's already made several other personal moves this year. Halper and Brule, Klesla come to mind. What other possible explanation is there? Would you rather have him made a bad trade than no trade at all? No, if I'm Maloney, I don't make any bad trades. I make the moves that are right for this team. And I think that's why we're seeing him be very cautious here right now. Um, I think he's accurate in that you know there aren't a lot of trades out there right now. We saw you know a few moves today by the Edmonton Oilers um, making a trade with Nashville, a goalie swap, and then not a goalie swap, but trading away their goalie to get a, to get a forward and then acquiring a goalie from LA um, but so many teams are at the cap limit right now it's really tough for them to take on salary I think we'll start to see that loosen up a little bit as we get deeper in the season because teams are gonna fall out and you know try and put their first sales sign up but I, I think you have to be hesitant here and you have to be patient um, he's tried some in-house shuffling like like he referred to with sitting Klesla down and bringing Brule up but um, you know you, you have to stay patient and I think more so you'll regret the, the trade that you do make that doesn't work out than being patient and waiting for something good to happen. Um, we had tons of questions today so I really appreciate your input questions that I didn't get to I'm gonna answer in the blog um, but thank you so much for participating We'll be back at this again next Wednesday at 2, um, you know, to talk some more Coyotes hockey. But um, obviously the Coyotes are back in action tomorrow. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at AZC underscore McCullough. I'll have updates tomorrow from the morning skate and keep you posted on what's going on with the team. And then make sure you follow AZC Sports, um, at AZC Sports on Twitter as well, um, because they post all the links to my stories and you want to keep up to date with that. So thank you so much for your time today, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday.